Nice. Three, nice. two, one, game time, setting up meeting, Facebook Live. You turn 30 next week, you said? Yeah. <laughs> Not nuts. How did we get so old? Bruh. We're like 20% of the way there. I know. That's okay. So we're still very young. Boom. Yeah. We're just turning the clock back now. I know, right? We're just going to keep getting younger. <laughs> Facebook fam, what's up? Welcome back. This is day 11 for all you Kenosis Online Retreat Warrior Brothers. We've got another killer interview with you guys. Ariel Rush is a dear friend of mine, and she is a woman of long-term sobriety, an established addiction recovery coach, and a spiritual practitioner. And she also uses yoga and some other somatic techniques, including EFT, and she helps guide her clients through the process of healing and reconditioning the brain so they can find freedom from addiction and trauma. So we're going to go deep, guys. This is going to be a super good one because addiction, dependence, attachments, conditioning, these are huge, 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 huge conversations. And really the premise that really starts things off is we're dynamic beings and we can recondition the brain and our habits. And that is through the power of practice. And you guys know that's the main theme topic of this retreat is to just oh, do the fucking work, right? So <laughs> Ariel is going to open and tell you guys a little bit about herself and the work that she does. Thank you, Ariel, for coming on mm. and joining me. Much love, sister. Mm. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so my name is Ariel and um, uh, I have a business uh, as of now, called Recover with Ariel, which is a addiction recovery coaching. Um, and kind of how I got into that was about four years ago now, I hit rock bottom in active alcoholism was like the primary addiction. Little did I know that there was like tons of shit underneath that. And um, mm -hmm. from then, uh, I dabbled in the 12 steps. I dabbled in all these different ways. I relapsed tons and tons. And for anyone who's watching this, who knows anyone who has suffered from addiction or has suffered on themselves, they know that it's um, a big process of starting and stopping, starting and stopping. And then you start to get that momentum and slowly, you know, like John was saying, you rewire and you, you step into a new form of yourself. So I don't really like to call it as much relapses as slip ups. And um, I, so was doing that for a while. And then I really hit my stride, um, you know, in I think it was in Washington, D.C., October 9th and uh, 2017 is when I, you know, I ended up ruining friendships that meant more to me than anything in the world. And they, they had, um, they had turned their back on me, not in the fact that they didn't love me anymore, but they needed space from the person that I was. And that just, you know, that, that's, that was it for me. And we say in the, in AA rooms, because I'm still a big part of those and in any, any recovery community is that your last night drinking or using isn't always your worst night. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the, it's the, your bottom is where you stop digging. And for me, I was like done. And so from then I had that, I had that pain. I had that sadness that had gotten me to that point that I was like, I'm just really done with this life. And what I had known by that point was I had known the 12 steps. And I had also had had a pretty significant yoga practice from when I was, I think I started practicing 17 or 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And so immediately when I was getting sober, really what came to me right away was how am I going to how am I going to heal this? And so I used the tools that were around me. I went to meetings. I did the 12 steps. I, I found a sponsor and then I dove really deep into yoga. And beyond that, I didn't just, I didn't just get sober. I, I awakened uh, to, uh, I awakened spiritually and I awakened to a new layer of who I was. I awakened to my body. I awakened to who I am at the, the root of who I am. And and these were places I, I just was not in contact with at all. I firmly believe I was disassociated from my being for most of my life. And, it, and anyone who's experienced that and, and then comes back into their body, you can realize it's very jolting. And then you have all this undigested pain and trauma and, and really just like unconsciousness that's sitting there waiting for you. And 
So I awoken, you know, awakened and I was like, wow, like there's a lot here. And <laughs> that, that started a big, big road. And I mean, since then I've been a, I would say I'm a student mm-hmm. of, of development. I'm a student of change. I'm a student of awakening. Um, and the experiences that have happened to me since then, it's like, it's like, I use similar tools, right? Like a lot of tools that John's probably taught you. Um, I don't think he strays away from those. I don't think those always change, but what happens is our experience changes of them as we awaken and grow and release and and find freedom in our bodies and safety again in the world. And so at this point, um, my Dharma was very clearly shown to me um, about a year ago when I found Recovery 2.0. And um, that's headed by Tommy Rosen. He's an incredible yogi, very similar story to me and to many other addicts. And he had melded the worlds of yoga and the 12 steps. And he had not only done that, he had melded the worlds of all spiritual traditions and all recovery paths. And he had said, come here as you are and just recover with me. Mm -hmm. And that just took me because my level of consciousness really couldn't um, connect to any, any dogmatic mentalities. I needed to be, I needed to feel spacious. And Mm -hmm. so from there, I, I connected with his practices, his domain, I've been certified, work with him many times. And then um, beyond that, I've taken what I know, what my experiences are and, um, and work with him and many others. And I've turned it into uh, an offering to the world, a service. And I, it's never been more true to me, like to fully understand this, like our mess is our message. And like, mm-hmm. that is just so, so clear in my life and many others. Um, so it's, that's where I'm at today. And it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful just to be holding others through the path that I went through as I continue on my own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's the thing. I love that. Yeah. It's, I love the mess is your message. That's so good. It reminds me of pain can be one of your greatest teachers. You know, it's like, for me, that's so true. I, I, intentionally or unintentionally like you know unintentionally for the most part at least unconsciously something else driving me you know for that contrast but I didn't know you know what I was doing per se but the suffering eventually leads you to that decision like you said which is funny because Egwin and I were talking about this yesterday the first thing that needs to happen in reconditioning and you know setting yourself on that path is I need a change and you commit, you commit like that's it at first it's like you said you stop digging like that it, there's just a point where you break yourself essentially you know and you're like yeah okay, that's it I can't take anymore you know <laughs> the so, gift of desperation yeah 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 no kidding that that is beautiful I love that and um so you know, going into that work that you have done and and now you're sharing your experiences and your knowledge and your teachings from uh, all of the resources that you use, how does that look in your practice and, and what do you often see with your clients? And, um, you know, like, is addiction a big deal? Mm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. does everybody, you know, suffer from this to some degree mm. expand on that yeah well first of all addiction is a f- in in everything i say is from my own personal standpoint so right whatever doesn't resonate let it be and frequency i believe it's a frequency that you vibrate at mm-hmm. and so it's anyone can fall into the frequency of addiction and anyone can you know any way that somebody expresses that is going to look differently. Mm -hmm. So somebody's frequency of addiction could literally be that they aren't present at all Mm -hmm. with anything. They're completely in their mind all the time. That is actually the first layer of it. We start off not being present and then that becomes painful because we're not in our body. We're not connected to ourselves. And then all of a sudden we're using all of these things to fill that void that has actually just been sitting here the whole time, but we decided not to be present for it. So that is literally at its smallest being the, the frequency of addiction. It can, it can also show up in emotional addiction. I am very fond of this topic in that you can be addicted to anger. Mm-hmm. You literally can 
noticed that, oh, wow, I get angry a lot. Like people know of me as the angry person. And it's like, you watch yourself. Like if you really start to build self-awareness in it, you're like, I'm looking for shit to get angry about. Mm -hmm. Because my body is so used to that hormone release of that anger. It's become dependent on it. It's Mm -hmm. very nuanced. And it's also very broad. Just like everything can be, you know, for me, I believe addiction for me started as a codependency and an an enmeshment in my life where I did not know who I was. And Nikki Myers coined the term, it is the disease of the lost self. So I have lost myself. How do I find myself? Well, I find myself in a, in a place full of um, teenagers and that are my age who I want to be like, and they feed and they give me there's alcohol in the room and then I drink it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, shit, I feel good. And like, I don't feel weird anymore. Like I don't know who I am. And so what I see with my clients is um, first, what comes to my mind is I, I notice with people who have maybe gone into substance addiction specifically, and this could just be across the board, but there's a very much an inner resistance to wanting to be and, um, or wanting help mm-hmm. or wanting, um, the things that are best for them. So like, I'll, I'll see clients and, um, they'll be like, no, I'm good on that. I don't want to do that. And, you know, and as from my point of view, I'm like, well, that's like the thing that's going to free you. And so it's like that addiction frequency creates this resistance in us that work like that feeds us these knowings like that. That's not what I want to be doing. I don't want to be doing those good things for me. I'd rather just stay here and be comfortable in isolation and pain and, and, you know, and because that's safer, right? That's safer to then to change. And so addiction, what I really work with with my clients is like, okay, so, but what if you didn't have that resistance? What if that, what if that thought right there that told you that's, that's not for me, what if that just wasn't there? Then maybe what would you experience? You would probably experience joy, happiness, freedom, love, amazing relationships, and no social anxiety, uh, ability to relate. And it's, it's, those, it's those points, but those inner resistance at the same point, at the same level are also extremely real and extremely painful. And I don't want to discount anyone's path with that because it's very scary. It's fucking hard. It's, yeah. it's scary as fuck to let yeah. go of the only thing you fucking know. It's yeah. all you know. And that's yeah. the thing about being conditioned, learned beings. Like, how could you ever discount someone in their story? I always think of this. I just always have an inner dialogue of contemplation going on from this. Like, I love <laughs> Me too. It. Muji has a great analogy. Oh, Muji. He's got, it's a, it's a uh, two branches in a tree, right? One's right above the other one. And on the lower branch, there's a bird and he has a nest and he's got a baby chick and a mama chick and he flies off and he gets food and he comes back and he gives the food and then he hangs out and he relaxes and then he eats and then he goes to sleep and then he wakes up and he does it again. And it's, mm. it's the doing bird. And then right above that, there's another bird that just sits there and exists and just observes and is aware of everything, including the the doing bird and his family and the busy doing working life. And then there's the other bird. So I, I love that analogy of just having that ability to kind of like detach. Yes. Observe. Uh, we talked about that yesterday too, contemplation, detachment plus observation, where you can kind of just step back and like be the scientist observing the mouse in, in the scientific experiment instead of being attached to the being in the maze, being the mouse. Um, oh, Definitely. That's a perfect way to put it. But it's, you know, like that is all, you know, is being the mouse and that's what you've conditioned to be. And I love to what you said, the, the sympathetic conditioning, like we're, we're addicted to stress in the sense that that's all we know because we've been conditioned to connect to Mm. stress instead of connecting to harmony in nature. So it's this sympathetic and disconnected conditioning that because we're disconnected, it, it's like unplugging the computer. You can't charge the battery to the infinite amount of intelligent energy around you. So you're not getting 
refilled. And then at the same time, you're also leaking energy everywhere because yes. you're so stressed out that that adrenaline is burning through. And like, what's the one, one of the biggest diagnoses right now is adrenal fatigue, you know, and oh, yeah, oh, yeah. chronic fatigue in general and all of these compromised immune systems, autoimmune diseases, lethargy, lack of energy, you know, all of this is because we're disconnected and we're addicted oh. to that stressful lifestyle. It's, but again, it's all we know. And so if the environment is creating this soup of stress, then that takes us into that, you know, game of contrast that we play until we've had enough of the fishbowl. So we lose our shit. Yeah. And we take, we go, <laughs> okay, I got to get out of this, this stress mode. And then that's when the, like you said, that's the change. You're like, okay, you snap out of it. And then the, I love the Buddha. You don't get angry. You become anger. You become mm. that frequency of that emotion. And I love that you touched on that because that's actually what we're doing for the guided meditation in the morning is we're tuning the instrument. We're tuning the physical body with breath work, movement, and sound, chanting, om, chakras, alignment, tuning a guitar, right? Just tweaking, oh, okay, we're in tune there. Okay, emotionally, let's tune to those frequencies that we desire to feel. So I just take them to the highlight reel, which is those positive experiences that yeah. they that they can kind of glean that experience and tune it. Okay, once you got it over here in the present moment, just hold on to that. The experience itself can be released. It's not about the actual experience that facilitated that emotion. It's once you get to the frequency of that emotion, then you can hold that there. And then you can take your attention to from the present moment, if you desire that edge of the unknown, like Joe Dispenza says, and start yeah. to use that positively charged momentum of energy you've created with the emotional and physical body to then channel that beam of light through the magnifying glass the mind to center in all of that energy to one focal point and that's though that's like our greatest gift of mm. uh, is to be able to but that's sharpening that axe all that's all of the processes you got to release all the other shit first before you can get in there but i just love yeah. that you touch on that the you yeah would, frequency that's so good that's so true and it's easier to stay within that frequency of comfort and safety yes. than it is to go into that edge of the unknown that you don't know if it's safe you really don't know and it's being able to surrender to that just yes. like fuck it okay i trust and if it fucks if it fails it fails whatever fail forward i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go out and go on a limb here and that's the change. That's the dynamo that I need to change. Okay, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Facing it, facing the fear and doing it anyway. It's mm -hmm. a very simple statement that I will say has absolutely changed my life. Like if I wouldn't have, I mean, it's easy to be fearful of so many things. And especially at this time, I actually feel like isolation is a gift in many ways, but it's also uh, people who are really suffering are actually falling deeper into it. So mm -hmm. they are going to have even a harder time stepping out after this. And the stories from the ego, which are exactly what, so the isolation and the suffering, right? Like, mm -hmm. or the, the staying in the comfort, that's all ego. Like that, that's why our ego was created to keep us safe. So in my opinion, it's a part of that. So it's going to continue to say all those things and it's going, and it's going to feel, and as, it's going to feel so real, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, okay, I'm going to not listen to that. I'm going to follow what I know is right for me and move forward and take the stepping stones forward. And, and that's what a lot of, uh, in addiction research, they say, you know, addiction just really is the inflated ego. Mm -hmm. It's just like a massive ego. <laughs> like, somebody just living really 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 in that space just like diving into it so deeply that they're just and that's why it's so related to being disconnected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's great i mean so true too just so what's the antidote connection yeah yeah <laughs> No, and the yeah. practices and the yeah. practices so much. So, and I mean, I would say, you know, practice and ritual is such a big part of your, of your men's yeah. retreat. And, um, what a beautiful offering we've been given by the universe to refine those. 
to find what works for you, to go online and be like, okay, what do I want to try? Do I want to do visualization? Like you were just explaining visualization, which is so powerful and really resonates with a lot of people. Or do I want to do like Buddhist meditation? I want to try this because a lot of us are just doing this for the first time. Yeah. So let's see what works for us and let's feel that and own that. And especially as people in recovery from addiction, they don't a lot of times know what's right for them. And that's a big wound. So you need to start out finding what that is. And yeah, the, that, that vulnerability to coming from that space of dependence addiction, where what if I, what if what the next thing I choose hurts somebody else, you Mm. know, or just like that, like, Oh gosh, you know, it just, there's just such a lack of connection, you know, taking, it really comes back to that as just, And there's no place to develop, you know, like we were talking right before the call is creating a space for people to actually open up and be vulnerable, but also still be able to be within a safe, grounded, structured container that allows for you to stay within the framework and not, you know, deviate, you know, having that guide, someone that can at least provide you, you know, with a a Mm. kind of a compass that route. But, that's why guru culture was created. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. that's where guru culture came from. You know, in the 12 steps, we have sponsors, mm-hmm. you know, like guide, guidance, it's, you know, and asking for help and, um, and, and then accepting that help mm-hmm. is so hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, um, but from my experience, it is sometimes the most amazing decision I made was to tell somebody, Hey, I'm struggling Mm -hmm. and I need help. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you being able, I I think, especially for my journey has been specific. I have definitely had my very strong attachments Mm -hmm. in this physical realm to Mm -hmm. sense of pleasure. That's for sure. I mean, the gamut of what men are exposed to, you know, essentially like how much alcohol can you drink because that makes you cool and how strong are you because that makes you manly and tough and, you know, how, how, you know, many girls can you have sex with and, you know, that makes you a stud and all of these things become, especially for a man like myself, that's very competitive driven where it's like, you're just practicing that stuff like college you're just practicing picking up girls and seeing how much alcohol you can drink you know yeah those (laughs) those those become habits those become conditioned patterns where then you identify with those things and if you don't have those things you don't have an identity essentially because outside of that because you've never connected to it there's there's that disconnect and maybe you have this was for my case when i was young I had that connection. I didn't understand it, but it was very intuitively clear to me that I had a contemplative bird on the higher branch that was helping me, you know, giving me insights to the the environment or inner and outer. You were tapped into your awareness. And then I cut that, that I disconnected. And that's the thing is it's a free will choice unconsciously or consciously. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a choice. And I cut that cord to the connection. I grew up Christian And uh, there was a big fallout, family and religious, that basically was like, wow, I just saw duality within religion of this two-faced high and mighty to actual the reality of the skeletons in the closet and then the separation in my family. Or I was like, how could there be a God, you know, like if things are this bad, whatever, you know, in that sense where I'm like, well, I'm just going to. I'm going to not believe <laughs> and, and, and stop talking to my imaginary observation. Right. <laughs> because it feels like, how could I, this connection be real? Yeah. If this is yeah. what it manifests as. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then the funny thing is too, is, is like, <laughs> it's like getting in an argument with somebody in the same room and then like walking to the other side of the room and standing <laughs> like, no, you don't exist. You're not real anymore. <laughs> Even though I know you're right there, really, truly deep down. I'm yeah, because you're here. Because <laughs> I'm going to fool myself and stand on the other side of the room. And, and how much suffering away. did that cost you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just for being stubborn. And, and that's all good. Ton. That's all good because, right. you know, thank God I had those experiences to 
fucking come on dude you know but like 10 years later and really too i want to bring this up because i haven't talked about this much outside of the inter other interviews that i've done and we won't by any means we don't have to dive down this rabbit hole but it is just another tool in that example is my first experience of reconnecting with that of like uh, so basically I'm in the room with the, with, you know, my observational self on the other side of the room, higher self, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I, uh, it was my first experience with psychedelics. I took mm. mushrooms, psilocybin recreationally with buddies, college, <laughs> let's see if we can get high and the come down of that. We were all kind of like, first off, it was a great experience, pretty intense, you know, but set and setting is a really important thing there. And we weren't doing it in a very intentional way that had a good bubble, a nice structured space. And it was still, I like had very strong connections. Like I went outside and just walked in a circle in the grass for like a mm -hmm. half hour, like Zen meditation, garden walking kind of, I was just like walking. It was just beautiful. Yeah. Relations started to come back. And not, not like it ever left, but it was just like, you know, I started like the flower blossoming and uh, then oh, I went for sure. In that situation, the come down too was like a scolding, a talking to like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like finish college, graduate, put your pants on. You got shit to do. You came here for a reason. Do you want to just keep fucking wow. off and wasting your time? And I was just like, just getting this download, like, dude. Yeah, come on wake the fuck up let's go buddy like clock's running like what, what are you doing like you have yeah. enough. and I always knew that like I'd have to put my pants on and I, I just always had that connection there and blessing or curse you know perspective but that was the moment that for me was like damn okay I need to step back I just got a scolding from a fucking invisible voice in my head <laughs> I don't know where it came from but it was just like but I need to listen yeah and yeah um I just saw something the other day that was, uh, gosh, it was like a comic. I can't remember who posted it, but it was like perfect. It was like uh, this, oh, gosh, I can't even remember it. I'll, I'll mess it up. But basically somebody, they like, oh, you get all the insights. They rub the genie lamp and the genie lamp's like, you're con you, you're a addicted to your conditioning. You need to reprogram yourself. And they're like, I hate this lamp. Put this thing away. I don't want that lamp. I don't see that. I'm not going to listen to that. Oh my God. It's really easy. It takes you to acceptance, you know, like that's a mm. long story bringing it back around to where we left off is acceptance, self acceptance, you know, to just be able to be okay with you. Like I fucked up. I fucked up. You got to own it and just, it's all good. I, I can change. I forgive myself. Yeah. Oof. And now I, I like to, to the acceptance and the non judgment. I did some, some heinous things. I've, I've done some, some not integral things as a man. And I don't regret those things in the sense that they allowed me to be able to realize, I don't want to do that. You know, and that's not who I want to be. That's not who I am. That's not my truth. That's me acting out. That's me expressing some emotion. That's me falling into a behavioral condition feedback loop. And, and that's okay. That's not me. I, I can't attach to that and judge that about myself and not forgive myself for that because it was a necessary part of the journey to allow me to have that contrast and know who I am now. And that, that's like, I think the hardest part, especially for guys to like, it's okay, guys, like you fucked up. You did some yeah. shit. It's all good. You got to let that shit go and commit now to just buttoning things up you know, the, that, that committal, that acceptance, like it's okay today. I, I love this quote too. And this was an addiction quote actually that I got related. It was, it was talking about depression and it just resonated with me so strong is today. I try again. Like if you fuck up, if you slip up those slip ups, it's okay T today. I try again. It's okay. Just keep trying again. Keep trying again. Commit to that change. Yeah. Don't attach to the expectation of the outcome. Don't judge yourself for making a right or wrong decision because that doesn't matter. And just commit to today I try again. Well, it's interesting you say that. Like one of my favorite quotes and this, you know, this man's a little questionable these days, but Yogi Bhajan, <laughs> Yogi Bhajan said, um, I, every, it's, I'm gonna butcher it, but it, I'll get the point. Every day I walk in a shower of self-forgiveness. Mm. Mm. And, you know, it's like, even, you know, no matter where you're at, you're human. Yeah. You're absolutely human. You, you, you came here for this and, and something I continually tell myself because I, I have a core wound, 
core wounds around failure because of this experience in addiction and a core wound around doing it right. Am I going to do it right? Because last time I did it so wrong, Mm -hmm. you know, and is, is really, you know, as you awaken and as you choose to accept yourself, you realize that nothing is ever wrong. It's just not. Mm-hmm. It's there. There are the dualities of wrong and right, and yes, we obviously want to be moving towards expansion rather than constriction, and you know. But the thing is, that is your story. Yeah. And as I said in the beginning, is your message your message? Like, how are you supposed to have that message? How are you supposed to connect with actually all of the human beings on this planet if you just came out of the womb with white light? And started, you know, being perfect all the time. I mean, mm. yeah, we hopefully we're moving towards more of a um, an open, um, less dualistic, uh, connected society. But right now, you know, we're human, and failure is is just not actually real. Mm-hmm. It's an illusion, mm-hmm. and it's just a part of the past. Mm-hmm. And I think as um, recovering addicts, or and and I find it, you know, it's just everybody. We were very hard on ourselves. And, I, and especially when we start this spiritual journey, then we're like, okay, well now I better be super perfect. And, and then it's in one day I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to be super 5D floating in the ethers. And then you realize you're like, nope, still pretty fucking human. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like it's not going away. Yeah. And so it's like the practice really that I come back to over and over and over and over and over again is like, in this moment, can I accept everything that I am and just be flow, flow, stay in flow with it all. Let it move, detach, detach, let mm-hmm. it come through, let it be there instead of holding on to it and creating suffering. So that fear of, oh, I failed. Okay, well, I forgive you. I'm going to let that go and we're going to move on. Mm-hmm. Easier said than done. And uh, the practices that I do every morning are a, one of the only reasons why I'm able to do that to any discretion because I have a conscious awareness of the capability of doing so. And then I have also the breath practices that have moved, I believe have really moved physically have moved shame out of my body. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Huge trauma, shame, guilt. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the subconscious mind, you know, I, I feel like every day I sit and do, you know, Sata, Nama, Rama, Dasa, I am like cleaning my subconscious mind. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I just feel it. Like, it's just like, bye, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bye bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I can go in there, like, you know, I, I had a really rough day the other day. I was like really collective intensity and, and being empathic, like we discussed before. It's like, sometimes I can feel a lot of stuff. And I woke up the next morning and I sat down on my mat and I wasn't still just not fully where I wanted to be. Right. And I sat there and I did this meditation hand on my heart. Um, I think it's, it's, it's this way. And I chanted and felt the vibration of my heart for 15 minutes or so. And I just, all of a sudden I was like, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I'm yeah. good. Like, let's go. Like what's yeah. today about? I'm going to go walk. Yeah. Like it was cool. And that's, that's why I don't stop. Yeah. And I love mantra too. I love that you brought up the Satanama Ramadasa mm. mantra because we're doing that in the, uh, oh, yeah? the PM yoga ritual. Yeah. We're going over different mantras. That's one of them. So, uh, yeah. That one's a good one. It's, 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 what a tool for reconditioning too. It's, you know, yeah. I, I was actually thinking about this just like yesterday. Um, Kung Fu is, the expression of art created through discipline and hard work is kind of like a loose translation of Kung Fu. Essentially, you know, it's, it's mastery of your craft, whatever that is, which has been a key theme of what we've talked about in some of the other episodes is that's where the power of practice comes in is the practice becomes the meditation becomes daily life. And so instead of trying to rush through the day and do your chores Mm -hmm. to be able to go sit down in your meditation and have a moment to connect with your space. You're connecting with your space when you're sweeping the floor. 
you can have kung fu while you're doing the dishes you can have full presence to clean that dish and appreciate that dish for allowing you you know a tool to be able to conveniently house your food that you shovel into your face you know just like yeah present in those little moments like that's that's the practice over time that that comes everything becomes an expression of mastery that you do because you're embodying the frequency of mastery and that's that authentic truth like we were talking about just like you connect to to who you really are you're already the master you're already mm. the guru it's already right. all the information's already within your heart to integrate and this is kind of I, I know you wanted to talk about this so this should this could be a cool segue it's integrating the information into the monkey suit so that way the biological hardware can have the capacity to house the software the mind the information coming in and you know in in the same ses- sense too is allowing old information old patterns to be released mm using somatic techniques essentially so i wanted to just kind of segue that in as you know how to bring in the new good information and conditioning and kind of release and i guess they're both really the same thing like mantra does both and and that idea Mm -hmm. but if you want to touch on some of the practices and the the rituals that you do and uh, something that's like a big key line in our group which i think i know you'll appreciate is ritual is is um intentional habit it's a conscious habit versus mm. the, the habit. Oh, I love that. An unconscious pattern versus a conscious pattern. You know, it's something that you, instead of just like, oh, I got to ring the gong. Oh, okay, okay, I got, I'm late for work, you know? It's like, don't do it then. Come back later. Come back later. Hey, I'm here now. I'm present now. Because it's not about the altar. It's not about the practice. It's about doing this stuff to find this space in here. And you get to a point after, you know, expressing that mastery, doing the practices enough to where you express it without having, you know, and this is awesome because Wim Hof is proving this objectively now. He's actually overriding the autonomic nervous system consciously with thought. They put him in a tub of ice, no breath work, no movement, nothing. He just sits oh, wow. in the water and talks about the process of him concentrating on what a G. to his body, just saying, hey, body, okay, I want you to heat up. The ice melted. They had to add more ice because he was heating it up so much just from sitting in there telling his body to get hot, you know, but I mean, again, nothing new. If you know, I the, love him. if you know yoga, the lineage of yoga, I mean, he's a yogi and you go back to like Yogananda and Ramakrishna and on and on the list of these people that have done the power they have, they have put in the work to embody the power of practice, which allows mm. them to express mastery and, and to believe it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The knowing, the knowing. And that's even more going into that integration. So tell us about some of the techniques that you use to integrate, to release, but then also to bring in and to integrate into this new, you know, frequency. Because especially right now, as the frequency continues to elevate, people have a choice. Hey, it's 11, 11 Hawaii time right now. So oh, sweet. <laughs> give, us some, give us some yeah. stuff, kind of like the, the practical stuff that you use in your personal life. And then for sure. Stuff that- team you know that you use with your clients so exactly what i do with myself i do with my clients yeah. everything <laughs> that i practice i i i give i don't give something i haven't practiced it's just not a part of my integrity my values um and something to talk about habits is you cannot like my teacher taught me this you cannot like get rid of an, a habit without bringing in a new one <laughs> you gotta put a new one in there so mm-hmm. it's like yeah the mornings i used to wake up and i used to wake up and eat right away and have coffee right away that was that practice. That was that habit. Now I literally don't brush my teeth before I go into my meditation room, which I know is such a privilege. It's just, it's my it's a little closet and I close the door and I sit and I decide, okay, what am I doing today? And that's going to look different every day. I bring a level of flexibility to that because I think yeah. structure can actually, um, is incredible. Okay. So structure in itself is beautiful, but when we start to go into perfectionism, we're really setting us ourselves up for failure, for depression, for, yeah. um, pain and suffering and just all these things. So again, shower yourself in self-forgiveness every moment of the day and follow what you need. So what I most of the time do is, um, when, when I first got sober, it was, it was a very strong vinyasa asana practice. Like that was like, I was doing, you know, tons of sun salutations first, you know, just 
and also flow. I was a dancer. Uh, I am a dancer because that doesn't just go away. And um, <laughs> I, so I was like, I would just put my mat down in my room in DC and I would just dance around and I would just be like, and get into my yoga. And, and it was, it was just like, I want to be in my body. So I just wanted that. And then, you know, I, I, I would say that was a big movement, somatic release practice. I even feel like somatic releasing sometimes is just sharing with somebody where you're at. Like that literally just like processing can be very somatically releasing. So having your friends that are very, your spiritual consent friends that you, they have spiritual consent to listen to your story and respond. That shouldn't always be everybody because some people don't know what the fuck they're talking about and they're just going to trigger you. I know that's maybe a little dramatic but it happens it and then yourself. protect yourself and your boundaries it's important um and also so what it's moved into is is now pretty strongly a kundalini based practice which is um i like a strong breath i like a I like a strong breath. I like a movement. I like a twisting. I like an opening of my spine. I want my Kundalini to get breath and movement and spacious. I want it to come up. I want the neurotransmitters to get their place, their, the hormones to get their place. I want vitality coming through me. And if you practice long enough or even once, you will know you're like, okay, this is some vitality. There's like no other way of putting that. And so every day it's, it's doing that and cleaning that out and, and facing that practice. Dance and shaking can still be something for me, even today before I got on this call, you know, like let's shake out the nerves, shake out the nerves. And just because that's sometimes that's just sitting in there, those old memories, mm -hmm. right? Like you can be the most powerful person and be walking in your truth and be fucking awesome and still have memories of the moments when you were. Mm -hmm. And you you want to get those out. You so shaking and dancing, putting on music that I love. And then EFT, emotional freedom technique is something I've recently gotten certified in. And then I was, um, and I practice at this point with myself pretty, pretty often. Um, and I like a guided EFT practice. So I still watch teachers. And um, I, I think that there's a lot of wisdom out there. And, and what EFT is, is just like a lot of energy-based practices, they're tapping into the meridians which is there for the chakras. And then, and they're getting energy moving. So there's a lot of truth to the, to the point that we keep stagnant energy memories, trauma in our body. I mean, I just don't know how many times we can say this and it is real and mm -hmm. we can create phobias because of that. We can create mental illness is created. can be very much related to just being stuck. And so emotional freedom technique is bringing up those feelings in a safe place. So um, if you feel like you can handle it alone, you can do that. But if you really want support, I highly recommend support. Mm -hmm. And there's tapping points. So there's the karate chop here. There's back of the head or top of the head right here beside the eyes, under the eyes, under the nose, under the lip, chest here sides like all these areas and as you bring up the emotion so if i were to say john um where when was the last when was the last time you felt fear of you know being seen something to that extent or being authentically you or bring that up i want you to feel that in your body i want you to feel what it feels like what was and bring it to about like 70 80 percent Okay, bring it up. Now we're going to chop. We're going to start here. Or we're going to start here. Sometimes people start here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about it and we're going to feel it. Okay, really feel it. Really feel it. And you're going to say, you know, when I, when I was eight and I got embarrassed in front of class and everyone laughed at me and when I was eight and everyone laughed at me and, and I didn't feel loved. And, and, and you also say things like, even though I feel this fear, I love and accept myself. Even though I feel this fear and there's, there's so many different ways of doing it and I'm kind of all over the place, but there's a regimen mm -hmm. and, um, I love and accept myself. And I know as men who are watching this, like that, like fair, airy, fairy, like I love and accept myself, you know, it's like, but yeah. that's that feminine nature, bringing that into your self is going to really 
like that could be the little spot you're missing that might really unlock you and unlock like that stagnancy, unlock that resistance that I was saying before. And you, you can, and so you do this, you know, maybe five minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe an hour you're working on something. And what it does is it lowers the activation. It lowers the activation in the body around this specific fear, around this specific thing. And it does it safely because it moves the emotion. It opens the meridians. It opens the pathway so that these things can get out. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. And then you you sit with it afterwards. You deep breathe through the whole thing. And if you don't feel like it's fully gone, tap again. Mm-hmm. Tap again. And you'll, you'll, you'll feel it. I mean, I've never not felt it. Yeah. And it's it's a safe, it's a, it actually is a safe trauma informed technique. It is full on based in trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works, guys. Like ridiculously so. I even even just to get a physiological response of release and relaxation for tightness and restriction in tissues. Even just that, it's incredible just to downregulate the nervous system and bring you out of that sympathetic state. And I don't know, I'm getting the visual right now for some reason of just like, it's like holding your nervous system and just like, yeah, it's all, it's okay. I it like feels that. Good. It, and I love what you said to the feminine yin is nourishing and mm. guys have this tendency bill burr's got a great comedy on this he's like men you just push that shit down you push push it down and hold on to that shit you know like just like i'm gonna feel that yeah 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 just like pappy and then he's like and then you're going through the drive-thru at mcdonald's and they ask you something i didn't fucking answer it (laughs) you lose it because there's so much pressure built up there but i oh my god we, t- we talked about this yesterday a little bit, um, how Intros. stiffness is, and stagnation equals stiffness. And like Wayne, Dwy- Wayne Dyer's got a good quote. It's an older quote, but uh, the flexibility brings life and uh, hmm. stiffness brings death. If you think about like a plant, you know, young, green, malleable, like flexibility, yoga, flow, circulation. If you look at a pond that doesn't have circulation, stagnation mold nothing can grow in it you know other than like the microbes but if there's circulation of the water aeration circulation movement dynamic flow life comes from that movement and so mm. you're expressing it and and it's for the guys they'll that are in the retreat i'm doing a cold plunge five minutes every day and then jumping out and doing shakes and just for like five ten minutes shaking flowing, moving, doing just random weird shit, qigong, whatever you want to call I it. I love it. it. A static dance. You're just moving the body, just shaking around. Get Like you said, shake the nerves. Just say hi really fast. Is that a handsome man? Yeah. Roberto, what's hey, up, Roberto. bro? Roberto. Hey, what's up, bro? Put your face in the camera real fast. Just say hi. This is my interview. Interview with John. With John. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kemp. Roberto, what's up, bro? <laughs> Mr. Kemp. <laughs> Wearing the what's polo? Cool? Yeah, yeah this is salata polo, bro. Salata polo, bro. Check it out, man. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> nice, eh? Yeah. What the hell, man? You're like, I auditioned it for Jesus Superstar? Or- <laughs> <laughs> bro, I haven't cut this since you've seen me in December. Jesus Christ. Oh, Can I get God. a mustache ride right now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got you. Okay. Okay, guys. I'll let you know. Love you, buddy. Good to see you, man. God, I love that. I had a feeling he was going to do that. Good. I was hoping I was going to see him. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. So, yes, he got. Tell him when you get the chance that he's in the the advertising pick. It's me, him, Dane. Oh, he saw it. Yeah, did he? Okay, cool. He was like, this is so cool. That was such a good day. yes yes oh that's perfect yeah just shaking it out getting the nervous system i wanted to ask you too um i love it just about uh percussion therapy is something that's interesting 
uh, like those, like the hypervolts and stuff that they have now, those, those guns, the Theragun, where it's like, doo, 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 doo. oh yeah, I've experienced another kind that. of release in that sense, where it's just getting that repetitive feeling, but then taking it to that next level and, you know, connecting the mind to the body. And that's what this whole retreat about is about is harmonizing the three bodies, mental, emotional, and physical, and get the physical body tuned with the emotion, the, that positive emotion, content, relaxed, peaceful, centered emotion, then take the mind to that experience, and be able to view it from a different perspective. And yes, have your whole being there to be like, Oh, it's all good, dude, no big deal. And then that physical release, like you, uh, psychosomatic, you know, the biocellular memory, like those emotions and memories are stored in the tissues. I, I so may true. Story, um, on one of the other interviews, but it's quick. Uh, there was this lady telling her story. She was doing a breathwork session. It was like 45 minutes, you know, uh, sleep mask covered on the back. And we're going to do that at the end of the retreat as well. Kind of similar to what we did, but even more breathwork uh, as the retreat. But cool. her nose broke rebroke from doing breath work because she and she didn't even know it until <laughs> after she all she knows is during and and the practitioner I was putting on was telling the story he heard this loud pop and he was like what nobody moved or anything but he heard this loud pop and he was like what the fuck was that and then the lady came up to him after and was like hey i had this really interesting experience during the breath work meditation I had a flashback to when I was four years old and I was a kid and I got pitched off my handlebars and fell on my face on the street and broke my nose. And then like she, he got a call the next day, like her nose was all black and blue and, and but it had realigned itself. But there was, Holy shit. there was like this memory and emotion and electric fence of fear and, and tightness and contraction around her whole soft tissue of her face right here. And she, wow. And what a random place, right? You wouldn't yeah. even think that. Yeah. Yeah. And she, yeah, no idea. Nose was broke. Yeah. Whatever. I was a kid, I, but she had no mm -hmm. idea. She was, and it wasn't even like a bad, Oh, and it was tied to this other terrible experience I had. It was just falling off the bike and breaking the nose. And she didn't even have the conscious memory of the experience for 40 years. And then doing breath work, her nose readjusted and broke. She got into some harmonized frequency that then allowed her body to readjust itself, heal itself, Oof. which is all the work that we do as practitioners is I love the quote, which I know you probably have heard and love too, is I will not teach you. I will love you. Love will teach you mm. getting people to find love, which is harmony essentially is step one. Then the whole system can kind of come back into alignment and coherence resonance, you know, so many terms for this where it's like, Oh, you know, like, harmony within the symphony the orchestra is all playing you know tuned instruments in key together the whole system works efficiently when you take each part of the body and optimize it through practice whatever that is you know whether it's yeah percussion therapy soft tissue release i wanted to bring up to scraping because that's something i do just getting tools with a little coconut oil oh i thought you were tongue scraping i was like yeah sure Oh yeah, no, yeah. I know, guy, I know a guy who sells silver tongue scrapers. Uh, nice, is the best. <laughs> um, yeah, but scraping like the the space between the ribs here, like a lot of the areas that you were talking about, are like some of my favorites. Where just getting the fingers in between. Oh, right here is like just like following the lines between the ribs and breathing into that and release. And especially for dudes, I mean, I don't, I don't have the personal experience to vouch yeah. for women because I'm a man, but right. no, being a guy, like opening your chest and exposing mm. this is like against everything about evolution that's like you know i need to be here to fight and protect my vulnerable and boxings like this yeah, yeah exactly exactly this is a protected safe position mm. so foam rolling and soft tissue and yoga and this this can release for me especially in my uh hip flexors which is a really common area releasing tension there like i remember the first time i got a massage on a massage table and the lady released my massage with her elbow and like breathed with me and exhale and gently push down i cried a tear of joy on the massage table i was literally oh. like oh, 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 oh. it was like and i was like hi afterwards i was like giggling i like, <laughs> called, I like called somebody i'm like i just got my psoas released it was the best Bro. thing ever I'm like, what the fuck? No you know? wonder we like to be touched. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, like that touching aspect of it all. And what I hear you say too is like, which I love 
which I see is in, in my work is like, okay, we start releasing stuff in the body and getting the mind out of the looping that it does Kundalini and all those in yoga practices and all these get it the loop, out of the looping. We then have a choice. Mm-hmm. Now we might not have had a choice before Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we had, we were unconscious to that part of ourselves. Now it comes up. We see it. We see a blink between us and the attaching to that, that thought or that memory that might come up out of, out of the woodwork. And we now have a choice. Okay. I'm not going to attach to that anymore. I'm not going to live from that anymore. And then as we don't, the nerve dies off and we no longer live from that space. Mm -hmm. And so the movement practices, everything you're saying, like scrape all these things, like whatever resonates with you in your practice, it's like, get in there. Mm -hmm. And so you have choice again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being able to self-regulate, I think is really important for men, especially Men with oh, trauma, yeah. men with stiffness and tension. Which is every man, by the way. Right. If anyone's watching this, you're not yeah. without trauma, even if it's little T trauma. You're a human. Yeah. I mean, you fell off your so bike. Welcome to the club. You fell yeah. off your bike and broke your nose, and you don't even know that your body's holding on to this tension there, like that lady 40 years. You She's know? a perfect example. Yeah. So just, you know, like soft a foam roller. You get a stop. Okay. I uh, like, all, I've, and I've had this experience. I'll foam roll my pecs in my chest and I'll get kind of like a sympathetic kind of queasy almost. Oh yes. But not in a bad way. It's just like, (laughs) I can tell my systems like whatever I'm releasing and processing, if it's physical, mental, emotional, it's all connected. Right. I can feel that like keep going, but this is like, you're doing the work, but just breathe into it, relax. And I'm able to like, okay, that's enough for today. Or Let's go a little deeper. Okay. Uh, and yeah. and like releasing physical tension is the, it's connected to releasing that emotional and mental tension as well. It's that same process of like, and that's why I love strength training. You had said, um, you know, having a practice that allows you to get fully into your body. That's, I love strength training because it's such a, a high demand activity as you progress on your journey, like all things, you know, like day one, I don't have my clients doing like power cleans or anything like that. But when you get to a level of technical complexity and physical intensity, where if you fuck up, you could really injure yourself, Mm -hmm. it forces you into that flow state. It forces you into the present moment because you have to focus on that and nothing else. Yes. And then that's the game that becomes the fun. You're chasing that perfection that you'll never get, but by trying it puts you into that present moment and that's the juice that you're really looking for is that present moment you and really are though foam rolling to whatever it is like it just you're just focused on okay now i'm on my third rib now i'm on my second rib instead of like i forgot to feed the cat and fuck i still got that paper and i got <laughs> send out the mail you know it's just like i'm breathing into this shit right now and stuff will come up and like oh okay whatever but just day by day, whether it's, you know, EFT, scraping, tapping, foam rolling. And you're present more because of those, like, Mm -hmm. or, and one thing I love about it is you're safe in the present moment. Like, Mm -hmm. I think um, I relate to this and a lot of my clients do just wasn't safe to be here. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel good to be here. I don't want to be in the body. I didn't want to be here anymore. And it was because I was vibrating with all of this shit that didn't make me feel safe. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. now I have the ability to be present here and now I can have this container I have this massive container that holds all of me mm-hmm. holds my sadness holds my joy I can be sad and I can be joyful at the same time I don't have to choose mm-hmm. that's a lie we can be everything mm-hmm. and I can hold all of this now rather than I'm fearful and then I'm just bang fearful for three days you know I'm a container for it all I've created this Mm -hmm. and that's that's that is the frequency of recovery Mm. Mm. yeah yeah that's beautiful just the process of of making it your own based on what feels the best for you and what you enjoy to do beyond the resistance because resistance will tell you it's not right for you start to learn which one is different in your body because our bodies will tell us the truth right but my body's going to tell me nah you should probably sleep no, I should probably meditate. <laughs> like get your ass up. So what's the difference between inner resistance and a no? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's a beautiful practice for you in your life. What is resistance and what is no? Because when it's a no, say no and mm-hmm. be no and feel no and don't care if it's a no. Mm-hmm. But if it's, 
you know, men are providers, right? They, they hold that providing energy. They hold that protecting energy Mm -hmm. and that's a big, no energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can, it can be confused with resistance. And, um, I think that's a practice just as a human to um, know those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I wanted to ask you one question too. This is off subject kind of what we were talking about, but I just, cause you'd kind of briefly touched on it as far as like, uh, routines but um what's your perspective feel free to rant as long yeah. as you want, on um phone and electronic dependence and addiction and why oh, Jesus it Christ. Is yeah and what maybe <laughs> what we can do some practical steps like you kind of touched on like hey don't look at your phone the first fucking thing when you wake up that's a good start but you know what what is this whole this phone fucking electronics thing what is this what is this um so I look at it from two different angles. I look at it um, actually a level of increase. Okay, so there's consciousness is rising on the planet, duh. And if you didn't know that, you know now. And so okay. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> and um, that means more connectivity. Yeah. That means more connection. Our phones do that. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. So let's take that out first and like, you know, realize there is a benefit, you know, the world has its, its light and it's dark. And then we also have that part of ourselves that wants a deep connection, but then also doesn't want to be here and wants to escape. And I will say from, I'll be completely vulnerable. I have a problem with this. Mm -hmm. And I think we could, a lot of us could, um, you know, relate and especially having a business it's yeah, like, that's oh my god, it's just like, and I'm on a solopreneur, so I'm like on it all the time. It's just like it's a whole thing. Yeah. So you're forced, you're forced to create boundaries. So like, let's mm-hmm. say you let's put an example. I was like, you don't hang out. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> um, you don't hang out with your mom all day every day, do you? Like, do you do you do you, she wake up? You guys eat breakfast together, you eat lunch together you guys, you know, go work out together, then you sleep together. I mean, even this could be your wife, whatever. You don't do these things. So why do you do it with your phone? So create boundaries. So what I have to do is like, just like the resistance. So I might have a resistance to putting down my phone because I'm like, oh, but I really want to check this again. But then, but is there an actual no? And I actually, if I really feel into my body, I can tell my, it will tell me like, Ariel, you're done today with this thing. And what I will do when I'm uh, at my optimal area is I will put that thing on airplane mode and shove it in the corner of the house and I will not look at it. Yeah. And I will spend time with myself and with my husband. And I really try to eat in silence. Yeah. I really try to be with my food. Um, that's a practice for me. And, you know, our books are on our tablets. Our fucking movies are everywhere. I mean, it's just like we're, we're hopping from screens and I wish I had a, um, I wish I had a fix all for this, but one thing I do have is when you start reaching for your phone, just ask yourself why. Mm-hmm. And then if, what, if the answer is something that really doesn't need to be happening right now, then you can put it away and start to implement being versus doing in your life, a balance of being and doing and sitting with yourself. So like, if you're like, like yesterday, I was on the phone way too much because I was editing all these videos and da, 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 da. And I just got this clear resonance from my body that was like, I was starting to feel mentally overwhelmed. Yeah. I was starting to feel like I was taking in too much content. Yep. I just needed to lower it. So I put it away, put it over there. And I actually went in my meditation room and I sat there and I just sat there with myself and I just wrote. And then I went outside on the porch I'm in right now. And I just looked at the birds and it's like, I have to consciously force myself to do those things. Because even a relaxing moment might just be, maybe I'm going to watch my favorite show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that's another screen. So it's shower yourself in self-forgiveness as you create the intention to become a better you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Today I try again. Yeah. I always tell people too, guns don't kill people. They're tools. You know, the, the technology that we have is awesome. Don't, you know, banish it or demonize it, just gain more knowledge and awareness around the proper utility of it. And like you said, find and what that- are you watching on it? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the real, if you're looking at a bunch of sexy girls on Instagram and all that shit, like then think about what you're putting in your body. I mean, yeah, it's beautiful. They're hot, but like, 
be careful. Yeah, and I mean, that goes to all things, you know? <laughs> ESPN, you know, sports. I was an athlete my whole life. I absolutely love the game of football and the camaraderie, the tenacity, the resilience, the, the composure, the leadership, all skills that I cultivated from team sports. And without that outlet, I, I cannot guarantee I'd be here today, especially during a certain segment of my teenage years. That was my expression. I could be violent in a controlled way. Like we literally called it controlled aggression. That was like, mm. our coach was like, you can be as violent as you fucking want if you can focus it and direct it in a way that is in this container. And so it was like, oh my God, I can let out all this you know, rage in that sense. But again, attachment to an identity, sports, that's who I am. I'm a football player. So I got to watch football because then... See, I then I can tell people how much I know about football and then that therefore gives me validity in myself that I do know about football and people people do think I'm a football player or whatever you know that you know and you can have curiosity and interest and passions and all that as well but just again like what are you feeding which wolf are you feeding the one that's helping you grow or the one that's helping you know that's 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 not essentially yeah point. And that's the thing is Instagram. I, this is, I do this with my clients is to help them have practical ways to decondition and recondition the mind. Like every month go through and unfollow 10, 20, 50 people, you know, and you scroll through and you're like, A, why was I following? Yeah. Hey, who is this person? What the fuck? And B, why am I following them? You know? Right. And like all you go through my Instagram and all it is, is coaches performing exercise demonstration videos gurus with super awesome quotes or guided meditations and then pictures of nature super dope nature pictures that's pretty much it that's like literally you all have that. to be like that john you yeah. you actually like have to be like that or you are literally a slave to whatever people want to throw into your body yeah you become you know like i love the quote show me your five best friends and i'll show you your future you you become yeah. the people that you hang out with you know, you become your environment, you know, for, I love the quote too. First you shape your environment, then your environment shapes you. You have the conscious ability to intentionally mm. set up your environment to be conducive to your growth or not. And yeah, then, I like that. And then if you do or not, it will influence you epigenetics environment affects expression of genes and function from an emotional. And what a level. choice. That yeah. Is. Like you brought up, but you know, in all level, in all areas, you know, if you, said I, I love this and again tool right the chair demonized demonized in functional training and and all of this yeah we probably shouldn't spend eight hours a day sitting in a chair but yeah. to but to banish the chair like pretty fucking convenient you know <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice to have around every once in a while i'm not gonna, you talk, need shit to about, sit. I'm not gonna talk shit about chairs like the guy who invented it he was probably like God damn, I'm tired of standing all the time. You know? <laughs> what if I build something where I can sit my ass down and relax? That sounds great, you know? But should we sit in it? You know, are we abusing the tool of the chair? Yes, right now. I'm standing up at a desk. I do have a chair, but my mm. desk is too tall for it. So what do I do with this short little chair? I Captain Morgan it and put my foot up so I can unload some of my weight so I'm not standing on the same joints the whole time i can posteriorly tuck my pelvis here into a nice hip extension hip opening quad stretch which is where everyone's short from sitting too much all the time yes so now i'm using the tool more appropriately i'm using the chair to help me stand better offload my weight and then you know have the advantages of standing versus sitting on the metabolic level at all the levels right like everything standing versus sitting so it's not like the chair is bad it's just we didn't you know, we became over reliant on it and we had a limited awareness of the functional use of a chair. And I love this um, correlation that like lateral thinking is tied to lateral movement. And so just all movement oh, interesting. Is tied, tied to the brain in general. If you're better at moving side to side, then you're better at shifting your thoughts from one subject to another in a lateral way. So they actually tested this, but with children and adults and, and movement. But here's this paperclip. What can you do with this paperclip? And like the average person came up, like the average adult came up with like one or I think it was two or three ways you could use a paperclip. Like, well, you could put paper between it. It's a paper. Right, right. <laughs> and then they gave it to the kids 
and the kids and you can mold it, bend it, shape it in any way that you want. And the kids are like, oh, well, you can you can turn it into uh, you can, you know, kids are just creative mind, the lateral thinking. They're like, oh, well, yes. How big is the paper clip? You know, is it oh. 10 feet tall or is it one inch? You know, so just the idea. That I love that. Being able to have flexibility in the mind. I don't even know where I was going with that. No, I get it. The imbalance. You know, like, OK, well, this chair I could sit in or I could. I could, you know, here's another thing that I could do with that paper clip. And this seems to benefit my function more. Same thing with the phone is, you know, go through and, and regularly observe the habits that you have and see if there's, you know, just like cleaning the house, that book decluttering the mind that got a lot of popularity, like the junk in your house is junk in your mind. The junk in your oh, mind. Oh, it's so in true. House. You know, you got to clean your shit out. Same yeah. Issue. The physical space, you got to clean the gunk out of those areas. You know, if you don't yeah. brush your happens, you get cavities, right? You got to floss your joints just like you got to brush your teeth. They're made out of the same shit. But yeah. You know, using the tools that we have available to benefit us like man that cell phone is sure convenient it's super fucking nice to have get on the internet communicate with anyone worldwide you know plan this zoom meeting with you in the blink of an eye boom and, and we're across the nation from each other incredible right you know but it's like okay you know connection coming back to nature and harmony and balance and understanding it's the balance that i hear you speak of like i really think like with unconsciousness comes in balance so you know with and then with imbalance comes unconsciousness like it's like kind of like a a cycle and so it's you know the answer to a lot of things when you look at like when I especially the mental scape when I'm having a maybe a debate on myself a lot of times it's maybe it's both (laughs) (laughs) maybe it's just both and I love the, what I learned from a teacher of mine, the sacred and. Mm. And like I'm, I'm in recovery from addiction and I'm a flight attendant and I'm, you know, connected to a higher self and I'm all these things. I'm not one thing, you know, mm. and I'm so many things in one. And that's the paradox of being human, right? We're, we're both, um, we're both like angel we're both god and human and then like mm-hmm. dense and light like we're and so mm-hmm. finding that balance i think is like one of the most Im- imperative parts of the journey and mm-hmm. so you you look at your life and you go okay i feel like shit right so where am i about out of balance where am i out of balance and and then you start to wake up and then you start to notice little things and okay i'm out of balance anytime so you you're on your phone too much you're out of balance Mm-hmm. to find your balance mm-hmm. and stick to it mm-hmm. and sometimes you, can. you know going back to the acceptance and non-judgment you know like sometimes balance is scrolling on instagram for five ten minutes and it just, is you know watching a netflix episode or you know honor that too like honor the the part yes. of you that wants to snuggle up into a blanket and drink hot cocoa and watch six hours of netflix like that's totally fine too you know it's just but the next day wake up and go on a run yeah and like you said too, consciously do it you know do it with the intention of i'm gonna do this and sometimes i'll play this game with myself more so in the past you know but it's a little game of like you do something that you know isn't overall the best for you anyway and and it's almost like you're you're the little angel on your shoulders like you don't really want to do that and you're like no i'm i'm gonna do it just to experience (laughs) just so i can suffer a little bit and then I'll really know I don't want to do it. You know? <laughs> I know it's that exact fucking power page. It's so funny. Just and like, then also I, I, the same one. And, and then when you, you know, like if an uncomfortable feeling comes up from that activity that you did, it, it is a learning. It, it is still a benefit in the way if you can be aware of like, yeah. no, yeah, I choose, I chose this. I'm going to sit in this shit a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This doesn't feel great, but I'm not going to judge it. That's okay. I'm here now. And this is why you don't do this anymore. Yep. You know, you're like, okay, yep, I'm, I'm back. You know, like, had to just take a smell of that flower. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, we're good. Yep, exactly. We can play in any reality we want to mm-hmm. as being, as quantum beings, right? Like, we can play in life in that way. And that's a really amazing thing. And I also find that taking, if I am going to watch Netflix for six hours because I'm having a day that I need to do that, yep. take the whipping stick away yeah yep yep and yep. let yourself melt into it yeah yeah enjoy it let yeah. yourself yeah, melt into it. a pint of ice cream you know like, right 
emotional feed that inner child right yeah. to some yeah, extent yeah yeah that's a, yeah i think that's really like a big part of it is yeah especially like if you got told no a lot as a kid and you built that up oh or like, yeah especially like leaving your parents and going to college or whatever when you leave the house you have that first experience of i need to do whatever i want i'm gonna get shit faced yeah yeah you do all that shit eventually <laughs> like oh, okay no yeah i don't i don't really want to do that, that who's much. got the mushrooms yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's it's so funny true. just you know uh one we'll, we'll, touching point that you said too is the listening you know like just getting in touch to where eventually the listening is so clear, you know, the more you find stillness, the more you can, you know, settle into the silence and the silence mm. then, you know, becomes the intuitive voice that guides you. You have to find that space first. And the more you practice, the louder that voice gets to where I'm going to go eat that pint of ice cream. And eventually it gets to a point where you're like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Nah, that's no. just actually, that's just a loop. That's an old loop. And fasting taught me that about food because I grew up with emotional eating and yes. suffer from it from my, I still, it's something I have to be diligent about. Not as right. much anymore because I've become so in love with nature and fresh food. Like my fucking garden is amazing, dude. Like oh, yeah. 40 heads of lettuce out there. Like I'm oh excited God, to one. eat that to where it's like I, the ice cream. Like that's, I mean, ice cream's cool, but my, banana avocado cacao ice cream recipe is fucking mind-blowing it's yep. so good and it's real food so there's so no good. there's no guilt there's no lethargy so i've retrained that but i'm a very much a pleasure seeker when it comes to eating food especially i fucking love food and the flavors food and is dynamic topic yeah just the novelty of it but then you know also having that conditioned pattern from the environment i was in where Oh, I success food, failure food, feeling sad food, feeling happy food. You know, it just becomes. I that. deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I want to drown myself in it. You know, on that other side of it, there's just this attachment there to the food. And fasting was fucking mind blowing for me because the first time I fasted, I went to the fridge that day, thirteen times. I like I just open it like no, yep. but I just like. Just to be able to observe that, like, holy shit, I'm, it, and it was just a conditioned habit. I was bored. So I could mm. just go open the fridge and eat, you know, and then I flash back of all these memories of me just bored eating all the time. And I'm like, I wasn't even eating because I needed sustenance. It was just literally a beep, boop, stimulus response, automatic, you know, like, oh, I it's saw pretty that. creepy. Yeah. And then you think about programming and conditioning and cultural control and how that's actually utilized as a tool to increase sales, make all these fancy, colorful labels that show sunshine and kids dancing around. And then a kid sees orange on a t-shirt and immediately thinks Sunny D because he's seen that commercial programmed into his brain unconsciously Ooh. 48 times, you know, so that's a whole other subject. Yeah. I won't go down that dark Sugar rabbit. addiction, you know, in a short yeah, blur, sugar oh. addiction is a big one. I actually work, I end with all the clients I've worked on, worked with, they are touching. Yeah. That's it's starting to feel. Yeah. And especially with alcoholism, we are like, oh, well, go have some cake, blah, 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 blah. which in the beginning of sobriety, I actually am okay with that for people. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I'm very soft with it, but yeah. it's always just saying, okay, I'm going to have conscious awareness of my eating habits. I'm going to have conscious awareness of my eating habits. And it just because someone else in recovery with me is deciding to say, fuck it and eat whatever they want because they're sober now, I don't have to do that. And that's hard. That's hard because why are you different? And, you know, like, and well, I'm just doing it differently. Yeah. Misery <laughs> loves company. You know, you've oh, got yeah. that group of people that will love to just sit there and, and, and soak in that misery, you know, and like, Oh, yep. come on, you know, just do it. Like, well, you're high and mighty, you better because, you know, and like, especially like that kind of contrast will come through. You'll likely deal with that. Yes, and, you will. You're right. That's a, that's a challenge, you know, of like, okay, are these people serving me in my life? Are they benefiting me or is this kind of a uh, what are we doing here what's the point of this this isn't contributing to my growth and so what you know what am i doing here yeah yeah, yeah. and that's hard that's fucking yes. hard you gotta you gotta let go of people that you thought were you know we're gonna be best friends for life maybe maybe not 
but you know, you got to oh, listen. That's a big topic in recovery, losing friends. And that we didn't have to get into that, but it is. And I think maybe in just spiritually awakening and, and becoming healthy, yeah. like mm-hmm. becoming, you're going to live different. You're going to yeah. live different now and people are going to judge it. Eating a salad, you know, like I've had so countless clients that like start meal prepping and taking food to work and people like eating a salad, like making fun of them. I know it's such a weird thing we do as humans. It's like, oh, so you're just telling me you're jealous. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Ultimately. Yeah. I can't climb the ladder to the, you know, floor that you're on. So I'm going to try to bring you down to my floor because I don't know how to associate with you up there, but I know how to associate with myself here. And if you come here, then I can then associate with you but i can't come up there and because you're up there i'm gonna try to bring you down there because i don't know how to get up there yes exactly yeah it's it's um it's weird it's very weird thing that we do and it's just a continue it, what it shows for me when i see that in my outer reality is like okay well the universe is just giving me another opportunity to step into verifying that i know what's right for me healing that core wound of i don't know what's right for me i'm going yeah, that's, oh gosh. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is so uh, thank you for that opportunity for, for doing that. And I'm going to continue to eat my salad. So have a beautiful day. Thank you. Yeah. And that's where you get at a point in time, like we kind of touched on earlier, you just get to a point where you're like, now nah, I'm good with all that. I'm not even going to engage. Yeah. Uh, I, there's a, there's a great teacher. Oh, here, yeah. uh, there's a, uh, hopefully I can get him on for the podcast interview, but he's a spiritual teacher out here, very uh, uh, traditional in the ancient Hawaiian lineage, goes all the way back. Oh, beautiful. Um, and uh, he, he says, acknowledge everyone, choose who you engage with. Acknowledge everyone. They're on their path. It's all good. Peace and love. Do your thing. That doesn't mean I need to get involved. I don't need to engage with you because if I already know it's not going to feel good, I'm not going to waste that. It's all good. You know, well, like, couldn't that be a metaphor for everything? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. inner life and your own thoughts and your emotions too. So I acknowledge everything, but I don't choose to engage mm-hmm. with most of it. Actually, <laughs> I let it all flow. Cause you can't ultimately know that person's story anyway, because it's theirs and you can't experientially feel that life that direct experience it's theirs it's theirs alone so there's no way you can even begin to try to quantify it if you wanted to anyway and so it just comes out as ignorance at the end of the day of you ex- tr- imagining or expecting or assuming that you know like that person you don't know where they've been man like i, I catch myself all the time going back to that observational voice in the head like because we do it all the time we judge shit all the time the mind is designed to judge things it's designed to experience contrast so then it can see okay i'm over here that's over there is that safe or not will i die will i survive if i go over there okay yes no okay and so there's that automatic judgment that happens very much so it judgment can slip really quickly to you know ignorant assumptions versus discernment where discernment is standing in your truth unobjectively unconditionally observing without any expectation or assumption of the situation just being able to hold that space and say, I don't fucking know what you've been through, brother. So I'm just going to stay here in my space and appreciate you and love you for your space without judging you because you could have woken up today and, and, and almost taken your life, you know, and yes. this conversation, me being a little dickhead for 30 seconds to you because I had a bad day or something didn't go right for me. That could be it for you. That could be like, I lost all faith in humanity. That dude's an asshole. I'm done. Fuck it. You know? And you never know that severity of pain that someone's going through. And fuck, man, pain, pain can be so fucking intense where like you said, and I, I resonated with that comment because Nina has expressed that before. It's just the pain is at such an intensity that it's just almost not enjoyable to even be in this experience. It's so uncomfortable yeah. in your own body because of mm. the pain. It's like, fuck life's cool but this is really it's disheartening you know it can be draining in that sense of like fuck this is intense is this ever going to go away and you know like i catch myself all the time somebody will say something corny or whatever and the judgment mind is always there the eyes see the ears hear the nose smells the mind thinks it's going to think you can't just it's always going to do that yeah it's It's just not attaching to those thoughts as they continue to come up but like this was a great example and I, i you know, I won't explain the details too much, but basically someone was 
saying some kind of crude stuff. And I was like, geez, that's, that's kind of like just ignorant, not ignorant, but like, Oh, that was, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Whoa. Cross the line with a couple of comments. And I'm like, Oh, that's kind of, I wouldn't say that, you know, but whatever, doesn't matter. Not my job. But then that same day, just later in that conversation, I found out that that person was um, a former veteran that was in Iraq doing door, door, door duty. I fucking have no idea what that guy saw, man. I, and like even hearing the stories, a couple of the stories yeah. that, he, that he just shared openly, it was like, fuck, dude, that, I don't know, shit, holy fuck, that's intense. And how old were you, 22, you know, or whatever, 19, wow. when you're in active duty as a kid coming out, like, I'm going to serve America. And then you go and you're, I mean, like, uh, this isn't the same story, but, you know, to where you're killing civilians, innocent people, children, you know, on oh. orders, and you don't know, you know? And then you come back and you got to push that down as a man and not talk mm. about that shit. And then it comes out in little weird bursts that are like perverted, twisted, rude, angry, whatever. You don't fucking know how to leaking, stop. just leaking out. Yeah. And then someone like me comes along and like, you know, like whatever, you know, judgment in any way, whatever it is to that person. And that person's like, dude, I, all I can see is that kid every night I go to sleep, you know, and I'm just like, just even thinking about that and that's not even an experience yeah. direct to me and it like almost makes me want to fucking cry just like that's you so can crazy. imagine you're so in, and you never know what those people's people's that have lost family members or whatever like that there, there's some serious pain out there and any kind of like and hurt people hurt people right yeah 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 hurt people hurt people that's great i know i've hurt people many times in my life yeah, yeah. when i was hurting too and so it's like the that's the the underlying spiritual principle of com, of compassion always living your life in compassion and um yeah it's um it's never personal but what isn't that one thing from um miguel ruiz says in his four agreements or something like that i think it's in, it's nothing is ever personal mm, yeah you know 99 percent of other people's problems have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So like we judge them and or the people judge me and, and you, immediately you, so you were judging him. Like if we go back to you, like you were judging him from your own perspective in space, mm -hmm. what you've seen felt heard. So it really wasn't about him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and like that is a very like that knowledge that absolute truth is something that can free you from caring what people think of you because they're only judging you from their small lens of even what they know about you like some probably 50 percent of the people on this call that are seeing right now think might think i'm a, like they don't they don't care what i'm saying or they don't they don't take me for truth mm -hmm. they're they think they might be judging me mm -hmm. ain't my business yeah yeah bro That's yeah their it's perspective their their story, their pain, we're all on our own journeys. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I love this, Ariel. Is there anything else you want to um, speak on? God, we have touched like probably all the interwoven universal laws. So I don't know if I have anything. This is great, dude. I love it. <laughs> this was so up. fun. That was yeah. like an hour and a half, something. Cool. Oh my God, Jesus. It felt like that, like not that long. I mean, it felt like a good amount of time though. Um, you know, no, I, I, I just send out any love and compassion to anyone who's watching this who's suffering and know that, you know, if I delved myself out of like some pretty deep shit and you, I mean, if you see pictures of me or knew me, then you would be like amazed. Um, <laughs> then like you can too, yeah. you can too. So just stay the course, follow what John has, um, reach out to me through the, what he has on the website, if you need guidance and, um, and know that you're you're just like us all. We're all the same. We're all on the journey. We're just unique. We're uniquely the same. Mm -hmm. And I love the example too of these teachings being the tools that will help you navigate on your journey up the mountain. Because the breath work, the meditation, all of them are just practices, just like a compass and a map. And at a certain point in time, when you know the land and you're a well-seasoned tracker your intuition will guide you and the tools become less relevant, but the tools are there in the beginning to provide you that structure, that foundation, that framework to help you make less mistakes, stay on the path, get where you want to go faster and more efficiently and more safely. 
and you have the ability to do it yourself. All you have to do is make yeah. that change and grow and just fucking do it, do the work, use the tools. But if you can find a guide that has already hiked that mountain before and knows the terrain well, then that would save you even more time and energy and mistakes along the way. It would give you that extra guidance and safety and support, that reassurance, knowing that this person has had that experience. They know the lay of the land. They can get you where you want to go. That's really the job that we play as practitioners. And that's, you know, yeah. ultimately our point of perspective is we're just, we're just expressing our personal story and the practices that work for us. And if they resonate with you, awesome. If they don't, awesome. There's a ton of other practices. There's many, many paths to the same forest. So mm. find what resonates with you. And eventually you don't need those tools. You don't need those guides anymore. Follow your own intuition, have your own individual expression and pave your own way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, my dear. It's been absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing mm. these brothers that are in mid transformation. So yes. If you guys want to uh, get in contact with Ariel, I tagged her Facebook page and her website, arielrush.com in the caption. She's an amazing woman. Um, we will continue to collaborate together in the future. So you will see more of her and more of me. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful rest of your, what is it? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Namaste guys. Thank Namaste. you. Ariel. Thank you.